presentation and uh, I will start uh, this presentation right now. I would like right to make now. a presentation about PG Metadata, which is basically a QGIS plugin to manage your metadata in your PostgreSQL database. Uh, what is the metadata? It's a uh, it's a data about data. It's to help people to understand your data. Uh, for example, on the right side, uh, you, you can see uh, all the, the, the fields uh, which can be used. So you have some identification fields like the title, the abstract of your data, the categories, you can add themes, keywords. Um, you can also um, add special properties uh, to tell uh, if uh, your layer is a uh, polygon layer, a point layer, to speak about the spatial level, the optimal scales. You have some data about publication, like the date, frequency, the license, and the confidentiality of your data. Uh, you have some automatic calculated fields, like the feature count, the geometry type, extend, projection. You can also add some contacts uh, to tell the people who is the owner, the publisher and the custodian and you can um, you can help uh, your user by giving them some links to external resources like web pages documents uh, pg metadata is um, has been designed for people using postgresql to store their layers data basically for example you have uh, you already have a post gis database with some layers like the buildings, footways, gardens, trees, and uh, all you need to do with PG metadata is to add a new a new schema to store the metadata. What uh, what is great with PostgreSQL is that you you have a centralized data store uh, so that you can have your metadata stored in the same location as your data, uh, which make easy. Um, for you to to share the metadata with your users they all just need a postgresql connection to access it you can benefit from uh, postgresql rich features such as uh, you can store tables relations you have contrast views uh, you can develop some functions and triggers to help managing your metadata uh, you can manage also the rights and the access control of your metadata, like uh, allow only uh, read or edit the, the metadata. What is great with PostgreSQL is that you have already many um, clients, uh, which helps you to to gather the data, to see it, uh, like LibreOffice, pgAdmin, PSQL, DBeaver. And obviously, you can also use QGIS as your uh, PostgreSQL viewer. And uh, the last point is that you can also back up and restore your metadata um, with your data in the same uh, process. Um, as a GIS administrator, you we have developed some tools to help you, uh, like uh, there is a processing algorithm accessible from uh, QGIS processing toolbox and you can create, for example, the needed structure. Um, there is a schema called PG metadata which must be created in your PostgreSQL database and so the, the scripts uh, allows to, to add the needed tables, the views and the, the data like the glossary and the translations of, uh, of the glossary. You have also um, an, another um, QGIS uh, algorithm helping to create uh, a full feature QGIS project to, um, to be used at the administration project. So basically it will create a, a new QGIS project with all the needed uh, layers uh, from the PG metadata schema to help you edit the contacts, uh, the templates, glossary, and, uh, and the, obviously the, the data sets. Uh, when you have created your administration project, you, you just need to 
uh, prepare the editing by uh, added uh, the, the needed contextual data such as the user defined themes like uh, the one above environment and climate for example you can add uh, your contacts uh, such as uh, the name organization the organization units and your the email address uh, you can extend or improve the, the existing glossary uh, if needed and if some translations are missing they just lay in a PostgreSQL table so you can edit them and uh, improve them too. Once you have uh, prepared your, your editing you can just open the full featured uh, QGIS form with uh, all the, the great tools uh, inside QGIS like uh, you have checkboxes, um, combo boxes, some constraints so you just have to choose the schema and the table of your uh, data set and then you can create uh, the needed uh, fields like uh, insert the title, the abstract, the keywords and you can have uh, another uh, tab with the contacts and their roles and uh, you can add some uh, related links all that is uh, has been done with uh, the native QGIS features uh, we have not developed this form it's, uh, it's just QGIS um, features for the admin you can also have some helpers uh, some data are calculated from the table content, such as uh, the valid unique ID, uh, which is a UUID, uh, describing the, the data set. You have the layer extent, the feature count, the ge geometry type, projection ID and name, and uh, also some other uh, useful uh, fields, such as the creation and update dates. We have also added some views to help find the orphan PostgreSQL tables, uh, which means there is no metadata for these tables yet in your uh, database. Or the reverse, uh, which means uh, you have already uh, added a line in your dataset table, in your PG metadata schema, but there is no table or view corresponding to this line. We also um, have added uh, some views uh, to help the, the admin to export the data, for example, a flat representation of the data, data sets with the contacts and links aggregated. So you only have one line per data set. So that was the admin, GIS administrator part. Now um, I will show you some key features uh, for the, the GIS user inside QGIS. Um, the main tools uh, are uh, described in the, the animated GIF. Uh, you have uh, the, the possibility to search uh, with the locator, QGIS locator on the bottom left on the screen. Uh, you just type the, the name or title or description, you find your layer and you just add it uh, automatically in your QGIS project, in any project. And then you have a right panel uh, showing all the metadata the GIS administrator or editor has uh, filled up before. So it is very straightforward for the user. They don't need to uh, know in which, which schema the table is, they just type some words and get the, the data with the metadata um, corresponding to each layer. Every time you change the layer on the, on the layers panel, you have the metadata which is um, updated. You can also export uh, each dataset to different formats such as HTML, uh, PDF or DCAT we, which is uh, a, st a standard to store uh, metadata um, it, it can help to publish or uh, send your metadata to another uh, user and w what's more we also have some advanced features such as uh, you can easily change the templates for the HTML content uh, which is visible on the right panel 
um, they are just stored inside the HTML template table so you can edit them very uh, very easily inside QGIS uh, in QGIS form you can also use some PostgreSQL um, queries for example to create to generate the HTML card like uh, you just select uh, a function uh, you, with the, the schema the and the table and you can uh, choose the localization for example here it's uh, the French uh, card you will get you can have uh, another um, function PostgreSQL function to generate a decade representation uh, of um, all your data set or uh, only for of a subset of your uh, data sets and uh, for the um, and the, the system admin, uh, you can configure how the QGIS user will uh, use the, the plugin. For example, you can, uh, in the configuration file, you can add some uh, variables to to tell the to hide the admin tools or to auto activate the plugin if it has been deployed uh, by another tool. You can also um, share your metadata. Uh, once before we we have seen how to export uh, each metadata um, you can also um, use the SQL functions to show uh, to get the HTML card and use it in your own application if you are a, a developer for example here we show how um, there is a module in Lismap web client which is a, a QGIS project publisher web publisher and you can uh, you, you have the same HTML uh, presented uh, in the middle here, um, which you, you can get only uh, with the SQL query. So it's uh, it's meant to to help the developer to integrate uh, the feature of PG metadata inside other applications. You can also um, use uh, the, this module, for example, also exports all the catalog um, and in a format that can be harvested uh, by um, third-party uh, metadata portals. We have also a documentation for the administrator, for the end users and uh, for the system administrator um, and uh, with other uh, pages uh, covering change logs, uh, we have some videos, and the roadmap and uh, also the database structure you can uh, have it uh, on this link and it's uh, always it's auto generated so it's uh, integ integrated every time we we uh, publish a new release um, as a conclusion i will first uh, try to to answer the the key question why another metadata tool um, we know many open source tools already exist to store and share the metadata so why PG metadata? Um, some some reason here um, I talked about that before in the, my slide uh, about PostgreSQL you have rich features it's, um, it's easy to, to share to publish because you just need a PostgreSQL connection um, what is the key feature I think is we keep the metadata as close as possible to the data so that you can uh, not lose your metadata uh, and uh, have it separated it's not really a new application uh, it's not a new metadata app it's more um, a set of tools for QGIS user and uh, existing PostgreSQL database so as a GIS administrator, if you already know PostgreSQL, you can understand very easily how PG metadata works. It's just tables, views, functions. You can improve it if needed. Um, and as a GIS user, you do not need to learn to use a new applica application. It's just inside QGIS. Uh, it's integrated. And it's more a GIS user oriented um, plugin as a user you just need to search and get the metadata from QGIS versus uh, when you have a, 
a web portal. You need to browse the web page and then download the data and then open it in your uh, JS uh, uh, tool. And it was not, and it is not, and it won't uh, be designed to replace the existing metadata web portals, uh, w which uh, are there to easily share with just a web browser uh, the the metadata. It's much more like a complementary tool. Uh, you can edit your metadata in your PostgreSQL database and then you can publish it, share it uh, with these other third-party web portals. Um, we have a roadmap. Uh, we want it, uh, we would like to, to add more locals. Uh, today is only in English, French and German, but uh, you are free to contribute if, uh, if you need some other language. Uh, we need to to add some new features, uh, such as uh, to support raster tables. Um, we would like to help the admin uh, to autofill the data set table, for example, from a selection of a PostgreSQL tables and views. You use the name of the table and the comment of the tables uh, to, to fill in the title and, and abstract. Uh, we need to add some import and export uh, tool um, from and to the QGIS native layer metadata properties. Uh, it's, uh, we, we want to do that uh, for the start, but we have not uh, done it yet. And uh, it would be like it would be great to to be able to import metadata from DCAT too. Uh, we can export. Why not import? Um, some uh, resources. Uh, there is a, a lot of links uh, I give here. You have uh, documentation, database structure, uh, the source code is on GitHub. Uh, you can help contribute in uh, translations too. It's uh, with Trendifex. We have a Twitter account. And we have just released today uh, the, the new version, uh, 1.1.0, uh, with view support, German translation, new items in the glossary, and some enhanced uh, locator search, for example. Um, I would like to thank uh, the, the French Gare province for funding this extension. Um, and uh, PG Metadata already has some contributors, so I would like to thank uh, FJOT and uh, Trutenberg for uh, testing, helping, and improving uh, the, the plugin. Uh, thank, uh, thank you for your attention and um, uh, any question, question are welcome. Thank you so much, Michael. It was a really uh, clear presentation. We have a, a lot of questions. I hope you can see the questions here in, in the chat. I can I've see them close to the, the oh you can see so can you start maybe it's better you to to read the question so okay you know, okay um, so um the the, the first uh, you you posted is how to manage multilingual metadata um for now we have uh, translated we have a solution to to localize the glossary uh, the categories the, the things like that the the licenses or uh, other things, but not the, the content of the title and abstracts, for example. If we want to do that, we need to to add the, this feature. It's not yet possible, but we we would like to to do it in the future. For example, for uh, for Switzerland or other countries, uh, need a lot of uh, uh, different localizations. Um, we um, we have only the possibility to export uh, the, for example, the HTML card in uh, in French or English or German, but only the 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 word title abstract will be translated, not the content uh, written in the in the dataset table. Um, um, uh, th there are some questions about uh, importing export uh, from or to uh, the, the base, the, the main uh, web portal, such as uh, GeoSource uh, or uh, CKN or, or, or that like that. I can 
um, share my screen. I'm not sure it will uh, it will work, but uh, you you will tell me. Um, I would like to to show, for example, um, the there is the this uh, portal um, which is a list map application, and you have the metadata, for example, here of the the, the layer which is uh, taken with the same uh, SQL, and this um, this entry point can also be harvested, uh, for example, to uh, uh, we have a French uh, government uh, metadata system, and uh, these all these data sets are harvested automatically from a DCAT uh, version of the, the metadata. Uh, for example, uh, I can show it here, and um, it's, uh, it's uh, this URL can uh, create the needed xml which can be harvested so you can import uh, or automatically uh, update the metadata uh, from the portals by uh, using this tool and we made uh, the the plugin uh, to help uh, using it with uh, different uh, solutions because it's sql based you can build your own application and for uh, the the import part uh, we have not yet uh, import capabilities. Uh, you can always write SQLs, and we we plan to use foreign data wrappers to get the XML and uh, use PostgreSQL XML capabilities to uh, to import the data. It won't be uh, very hard. What is hard is to yeah, to know the the difference uh, between the the schemas, but uh, that will be uh, it. It is one of our uh, goal and we will do it in future versions. Um, so uh, based on the, the, the answer, uh, we chose to use the DKT uh, standards because uh, it can be harvested by many applications. And uh, there are some tools who, which can uh, translate uh, this kind of uh, XML uh, to uh, other formats. Uh, so that's the first step, and we, we have a lot of work uh, to, to do, uh, to continue. Um, I read a, another question. Um, uh, is it possible to store the metadata in another database, or has to be for each database a, a known schema? No, we have uh, made it possible to, to use multiple connections. Uh, so if um, uh, if if in your QGIS you connect to several databases, you can uh, use QGIS to to tell uh, what uh, what can be uh, can be done. So in the processing toolbox, there is uh, uh, some tools uh, to set the connection to the databases. So you can choose one or several connections. Um, but uh, at present, uh, if you want to use only one uh, PG metadata schema in one database, uh, we need to rely uh, to rely uh, on uh, foreign data wrappers. But uh, it's a work in progress too to allow to use uh, many databases. Um, is there an overlap with the layer metadata search plugin? Uh, it seems to to do quite the same job. Um, we we will we would like to, we wanted to to mimic the, the the maximum the what you can do in QGIS. For example, there is a metadata uh, in the QGIS vector properties uh, with the identification categories, keywords, uh, contact, and links, and we. Uh, we tried to have a um, database structure uh, which um, to to be the, the close to this uh, this QGIS implementation so that we can in the near future uh, it is planned we can uh, export or import uh, automatically uh, from PG metadata to uh, QGIS um, metadata uh, panel. And I'm not sure if I have time for more questions. I just check here. 
Yeah, you still you still have. Like... Okay, so um, I answered the QGIS layer properties uh, metadata. Uh, so it, it can be um, we can have an option in PG metadata, for example, to to tell um, save to QGIS or import from QGIS. We could also have a um, processing algorithm to search for QGIS uh, metadata uh, files and uh, harvest them and just create the, the corresponding metadata. Um, we do not want to uh, force the user to have a, a full synchronization between the layers metadata and the PG metadata because for some cases and in some projects, QGIS projects, you can have a metadata which will have a title a bit more different that uh, in your database. So um, synchronization is okay if the user can control it. Um, so it just has to be done. Um, is it correct that it's not possible to harvest the metadata directly? Uh, for, our, for example, from Geo Network, it is not possible yet. We plan to, to add it in the, in the future. And uh, um, there is one uh, interesting question about uh, the, the model we, we chose, um, which can be uh, see in the, the database uh, uh, tab of the, the documentation. And um, uh, it is indeed uh, different from the, the, the one uh, in uh, the geo package metadata. Uh, we, we chose to be very light uh, in the beginning of the project to mimic QGIS metadata uh, properties. And um, we really need to have a further look at the, the geo package uh, standard uh, to see what we can uh, use uh, what we can share uh, to, to make PG metadata um, the more uh, compatible with other solutions. But uh, at present, it is completely different structure indeed. And you can uh, see the, the, the table uh, definitions, the views, and uh, all the, the functions that uh, we use in PG metadata, uh, for example, to de generate uh, the HTML from JSON or get uh, datasets and things like that. So I encourage you to go see the, the documentation and um, you can contribute uh, if you if you want to, to add some more languages or to help um, with feature ideas. And I, I would like to thank you all for uh, your very interesting questions and I hope uh, I was clear enough to to say we did not want to reinvent the wheel but to help the QGIS and PostgreSQL users to use and share metadata very easily only with QGIS and Postgres. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you very much Michael and uh, thank you for being so clear in your presentation and, and the questions. And uh, this is the, the end of, of this session. I would like to thank you for the four, the four speakers that we have. We have and uh, we'll continue, but we have a, a short break now for, for, the, for the next presentation. So thank you all and see you around.